Welcome to the first installment of my special series, Fringephoria, where I will be refreshing everyone on the first four seasons in preparation for the fifth and final season's premiere on the 28th of this month. Suffice to say, I'm really excited. Got my observer hat and, you know, my Peter Bishop kind of shirt and... So, I'm thinking it'll be split into four parts, one for each of the previous seasons, at least. Okay, so, to start off, Fringe, Season 1, leads us to, um, brings us into a world, our world, I might add. It is never said that it is not our world. Um, where there's a series of cases that FBI and other special groups are referring to as the pattern. Agent Olivia Dunham, who is fraternizing with her partner, which no one realizes, um, her and her partner are called in to investigate a case of a plane crash where all of the victims are have are in a state where their skin is like translucent and and they they die from pretty much from like crystallization or the like um and the weirdness continues from there stranger things happen man turns into a giant porcupine um People get killed by by giant versions of the cold virus tearing through their bodies to escape. Um, see a lot of really gross things. Um, we see double agents. We see people stealing pieces to machines that the creators have forgotten that they had actually created. Um, but we'll get to that. So, Olivia is introduced to Philip Broyles, who is later found out to be the head of the Fringe Division, which is a separate division of the FBI, which most of the agencies, including the regular FBI people themselves, don't necessarily know about. Um, Olivia his partner John Scott becomes infected by this virus that they found that was on the plane and she is trying desperately to cure him and not based not simply because he's her partner but because there's other things going on as well as I have explained um, she is for she ends up trying to get approval to get a doctor who knows all about these kinds of things who worked on a lot of human test subjects with it during the 70s and such to come and help her with this mess only problem is that he has been in St. Clair's mental institution for 17 years and the only person who can release him is his son. Olivia goes to Iraq and grabs Peter Bishop from whatever scheme he's working on. Like, saying she'll blackmail him if he doesn't do blah blah blah. Talks about a file that he has. Um, she gets Peter to come and release his father, Walter who Peter has at best a frayed relationship with. Um, he refuses to believe some of the fringe cases at the beginning, but as the season goes along, he not only becomes more of a believer in some of the crazy things they're seeing, but he becomes more of a believer in his father, who he only ever calls Walter. 
Walter is seems like kind of a basket case. Um, loves LSD. Um, needs to use his own lab to analyze everything. He refuses to do anything at any lab other than his, which is in a basement at Harvard. This lab requires a cow. For some reason, all this other cool stuff. Um, Walter is definitely one of my favorite characters. I mean, they're all great. The wonderful thing about this show is that not only is it science fiction, but it's straight up crime drama. It's character relationships is the key. That's the first thing before the plot, even. Like, the way the characters interact with each other is crucial to the series' existence. And we also find out that it doesn't seem like much of a coincidence that Olivia had to get the help of Peter and Walter because it seems that they, they and her are both very connected to the pattern. As well as the shadowy president of the company Massive Dynamic who has all the cutting-edge science and technology that anyone would ever need for any reason. And they have higher security clearance than Olivia herself does as a member of Fringe. Um, Nina Sharp and her robotic arm, um, second in command to William Bell, who tells Olivia that she can't meet with him because he is out of the country. Um, and then there's the matter of the observer. He wears a hat like this, it's bald, and he shows up in a frame within every single episode, if you can see it carefully enough, which I still have yet to f find in season one every single appearance of him. The Observer appears at crucial moments during Fringe events, including the one episode where he shows up at a, by a construction site where a mysterious capsule appears, and he knows the exact time and place of its arrival. For a reason still unknown during season one, he goes to Pete, to Walter Bishop himself and tells him to keep it safe. Walter apparently buried it in the cemetery, like his father's grave or something. Peter gets called to the cemetery to dig it up by the rogue who, to the best of my knowledge, must be must have used to been an observer, but is gone to the dark side, as it were. I don't know. Um, I think it's his only appearance in the entire series, but it's a crucial piece in the story of Peter. Um, one episode where they find a small, bald-headed child underground uh, I assume he's an observer, because he seems to have some kind of precognitive abilities. And I almost wanted to go out and say that he was an observer. He was a younger version of the observer that we see so presently, so continuously within the series. Named September. I'm not quite sure on that, but I am in the process of writing a fan fiction along those lines. And connecting into the final season as well. Um, not sure if it's any good, but I'm trying. But, the, during the finale we find, or okay, never mind, I'll, I'll backtrack. Um, basically every event within season one is leading up to the events following, in all the following seasons. Namely, Olivia finds out that she was dosed with some kind of drug. 
when she was a child, had a child on an army base in Jacksonville, Florida, called Cortexifan, which unlocks the potential in the mind, which awakens abilities that you otherwise would not have. Olivia finds this out and is then being played by the villain of the se of season one, David Robert Jones, who is trying to awaken her abilities that he knows she has because she was Joseph Cortex a fan. And he knows that she is the key to him figuring out how to cross into another universe. But before he does that, Jones teleports out of a maximum security prison in Germany directly to Boston. And he says something along the lines of, Oh, um, our being disassembled and reassembled on a molecular level, it may be killing me, but it's making me something much more. Also, David Robert Jones is played by the same actor that plays Professor Moriarty in the Sherlock Holmes Game of Shadows film. Good to know, isn't it? Um, I guess I'm trying not to be too, too plot-heavy here, just because I don't want to ruin it, but I mean... I'm summing up all the main points of the season. We find out that we see, see a shot in one of the final episodes wherein Walter is visiting someone's grave. And curiously enough, the name on the grave is Peter Bishop. His son, who is alive now, who is part of Fringe as much as him and Olivia are. Season 1, you also see the beginning of the early stages of romance between Peter and Olivia, although nothing is happening, like nothing too obvious, it's still kind of subtle, but you can tell the sexual tension and all this other stuff here. Great levels. Um, the very end of season one shows Olivia getting dragged into the parallel universe and meeting with at long last, Dr. William Bell, played by who? Leonard Nimoy. Yeah, Spock. Spock is awesome. Um, William Bell becomes one of the most prominent characters within the Fringiverse, but still one of the most seldomly appearing physical characters in the show. And that's what I think is really incredible. Um... And here's the big spoiler. Olivia was pulled into the other universe from a moving car. But you gotta wait for season two for that. Um, Season two coming up as soon as I rewatch it. Or most of it. Have fun.